Hey folks, my name is Duke of Brew, and this is my very first YouTube series, my very first YouTube upload. Welcome. Uh, my series is called Mini Amsterdam, uh, and in it we're playing a heavily modded version of City Skylines, and we'll be creating uh, several parts of uh, the city of Amsterdam. So in these two episodes, these first two episodes, we are recreating slash building parts of Amsterdam's Vondel Park, which is kind of like the central park of Amsterdam. It's pretty big. Um, it takes a large footprint of the city. And I'll go, I'll go into explanation as to why I decided to choose to start with a park. It's quite unusual, I think, for a s City Skylines YouTube series. But I really just wanted to start with something nature-based. I just saw Vondel Park jump out of the screen at me, and I was like, this is gorgeous. I want to recreate this as soon as possible. It's a little weird because within these two episodes, you really won't see people in the park. I actually have no outside connections set up yet. Uh, there are going to be barely any houses built during these first two episodes. And also, I will get into why I decided to release these episodes together, um, but for now I just want to talk about what's on screen. In this part of the episode, we're building a bridge that spans a part of the Vondel Park. If you go onto Google Maps, and yes, I should provide this content to you directly in the future. I think I'll do that. If you go onto Google Maps, you'll see that this bridge spans, just crosses right over Vondel Park. There's a tram row that's on it, and underneath are three park pathways that connect both sections of the park. And so I really wanted to start with this bridge because I, w I just wanted to get into something nitty gritty and highly detailed and something that's like small scale. And I also wanted to use procedural objects. I love using procedural objects and you can see that I'm using procedural, using PO to manipulate these wall sections so I can create this staircase that goes up. And yes, in the future people will walk up this staircase. Otherwise, I'm also using these retaining networks, these retaining wall networks, to create the main sections of the bridge using some ploppable asphalt and ploppable pavement, yes, to cover up all of the weird shadow glitches on the road. That's what you get when you elevate a piece of road but then you force the ground down underneath it and I force the ground down with those park pathways so I'm just compensating for that a little bit. So yeah we build this bridge in the next part of the episode we start doing the layout for the park itself the pathways the streams the rivers etc. I don't like to talk too much so I'm gonna leave you with some music and uh, I'll come back to you in a few minutes.
All right, now we are going to transition away from the bridge. We're certainly not finished with it. There's a little bit more detailing to do. Um, we're definitely going to revisit in, in the future. And so it's definitely not done. Now what I'm doing is just placing down the very first buildings. And I don't do too much of this in this episode or the next episode. But really I need to get a sense of scale, which is quite ironic given the mistakes I make later. I'll go into that. But I need to get a sense of scale so I know how big to make the park. And to get that sense of scale, yes, getting getting some of the roads down helps. Getting the buildings down helped a great deal as well. So that's just what I'm doing here. I'm creating these like two park entrances over by this intersection here. And I'm going to put some buildings down on this road here. I'm using these really, really cool uh, Dutch roads with the, they, uh, they have these like beautiful brick middle, they got the dashed lines. When they meet at intersections, they create raised crosswalks. Uh, they're a really cool asset. And I'm very glad that they're in the workshop. I do wish for a one-way version because there are a lot of like smaller one-way streets in Amsterdam, and it would be lovely to recreate that. This is a perfect style road, though. Just a comment about roads real quick. I do intend on modifying a lot of assets that I find in the workshop. Like, I, I'm, I intend to go into the asset editor and like turn a parking lane into a bike lane just because Amsterdam roads are incredibly specific, and I want to do a little bit of that. And here what I'm doing is actually just splicing together a bunch of different buildings to create a larger mansion. I've, there are a lot of these detached, gigantic mansions around the Vondel Park, and it just seems like there aren't enough assets in the workshop or not enough appropriate assets in the workshop to really get the variety and the the style of those and the form of those mansions. If you know of any assets or if you have any I ideas or comments about this style of building that I'm doing right here, um, this is definitely an experiment. I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments section about how to do this better. Um, because I want to just like make sure to create these surrounding neighborhoods with a bit of an accuracy, at least evoking the idea. And so now you're seeing us start the layout of the main parts of the park. Um, I'm laying out this like center line with this pavement road um, just as a marker to keep things aligned and so I know where the center line is. and. Um, using this standard park path, I actually stick with this. For a while I was like, okay, I'll use this for now, but maybe there's something better. I actually really like the vanilla park path for this, uh, for this occasion. A little later we'll start to build the streams and the ponds within the park, and the way that I'm doing that is again with the regular pavement road. Drawing out the shape of the ponds and then lowering the pavement road to create an impression in the ground and then I fill that up with water. The reason I didn't use the terraforming networks and they are great, um, the terraforming networks are a great asset. The reason I didn't use them here is that it would just make my life way more difficult. I wouldn't be able to see the shape of what I'm working on in its entirety and so I used these regular pavement roads and that's okay because I'll be covering them up later. The final thing that I do is cover all of the water surfaces with ploppable pavement or ploppable asphalt, excuse me. I get the two mixed up all the time. Ploppable asphalt and then I use, uh, use PO to just make the asset darker and what this does is make the water more realistic in my opinion. It makes the water murkier, 
it makes the water opaque so you can't really see the bottom otherwise you can just see straight to the grass or whatever or the road and I don't want to do either of those I don't want to see either of those I guess it's worth mentioning that I actually lost some footage here the good news is that I had to do the park layout twice it was just too big the first time around I got to the end of the first layout I might have done three quarters of an attempt and then I started putting some of those like cool Euro cube houses down that you see in the workshop I'm gonna use them for one of the neighborhoods in the surrounding area and I just realized oh my god this park is too big it's going to be as big as the rest of the city essentially it was about probably 1.8 times too big or twice as big and so I need to do I needed to do it again so what you're seeing right now is the footage from the first attempt and then at some point it cuts over to the second and final attempt uh, at some point and I really do apologize for the lost footage I am getting better at remembering to press record before I start playing so that's good yeah and thank you for bearing with me this is like my first attempt at editing video putting it out in front of people I think maybe I did it once for a high school video project or something long time ago this is definitely a learning process for me and I want to I definitely want to improve the editing uh, the way that I'm doing it right now is kind of unsustainable. Yeah, so I want to make my life easier, and I also want to put out better quality content for all you folks watching. I don't even think that it's noticeable that there's lost footage, or that the footage is from two different attempts. It's pretty subtle. At least one person is, I think, observant enough out there to notice it and mention it. So I wanted to, I, I felt like addressing that was, was worthwhile. Another thing that I just want to talk about real briefly is why they're, why I'm debuting with two episodes. First, I think that's fun. You know, sometimes like sitcoms do double episodes at the beginning of a season. So, you know, I think that is fun. The second reason why I did it is out of necessity. This is my first time like doing a video series. I planned poorly. I played the game to the point where I had like two or three episodes worth of content and no cinematics. So I was like, okay, let's put two episodes out, backload all the cinematics at the end of episode two. So you'll see all the cinematics for all of our progress in the end of that episode. In the future, I definitely don't want to do this, and I appreciate your patience while I learn. Um, going forward, definitely there will be cinematics at the end of every episode.
you can see here that I'm struggling a great deal with like water flow and uh, water levels and getting it just quite right just because like the water wells they work in a very specific way and uh, there's also not a lot of wiggle room with this project the water needs to be in a very perfect at a very perfect level and I was having problems with the water flow it getting all the way to the end of this stream and so all the water is underneath the ploppable asphalt uh, and it was also <laughs> flooding the portion of the park under the bridge and you saw at the beginning of this sequence I had the water pump out trying to suck it all up that was a lot of fun I eventually solved this by placing more water objects, moving them around a little bit, adjusting their levels, and also compensating a little bit by moving the ploppable asphalt layer down just a tiny bit. So now that we've got the layout for the park, it's all set. We are nearing the end of the this episode, so I just want to give a brief preview of the second episode. We detail more of Andal Park. We build an outdoor theater. We build a private gazebo. And we also build a restaurant within the park. Much more interesting, in my opinion, than, say, doing the layout of the park itself. So the second episode is much more interesting. And again, you can find the cinematics for both episodes at the end of episode two. All right. So thank you so much for watching my debut episode. If you like what you see, please watch episode two, subscribe to my channel, leave a like on this video, leave a comment, I'd love to hear from you. Once again, my name is Duke of Brew, and have yourself an excellent rest of your day.